Hey, hi, Rohan. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good too. Thank you for asking. So, Rohan, I know you applied for the role of data scientist here. So, uh, before we get the interview rolling, can you just walk me through your profile? Yeah. So, myself, Rohan. Uh, I have completed my post graduation from Saint Xavier's College. Uh, meanwhile, I have done one internship as well from some organization, and over there, I have made two projects. First one was COVID nineteen analysis and prediction, and the second one was uh, customer churn prediction analysis. Okay, so let's talk about the second project that you mentioned here, Rohan, like the customer churn analysis project. What was the project about? Yeah, so basically, the topic of this business problem is customer churn. Okay. So the customer churn is basically the percentage of customers who stop doing businesses with a particular company or entity. So basically, we made a model. Which is going to pre, uh, which is going to predict whether the customer is going to churn or not. Okay, and uh, who was the business entity here? What was the business? So, can you explain that a bit? Actually, uh, we collected the data from Kaggle. There was one uh, telecom company data available for us to for, to perform customer churn analysis and prediction. So, we collected the data from Kaggle, and then uh, did all the data pre-processing, cleaning. And modeling. Okay, what was the data pre-processing which was done in this? Yeah, so basically, uh, we follow all the normal steps like uh, first checking for null values or not. If there are null values, then how to replace those null values? Whether to omit those null values? Then the second part was uh, there was uh, there were only uh, I guess four to five categorical variables like yes no types, and we all know that uh, we uh, we can't fit a model categorical values we have to feed a model with numerical values so we have to encode them so we converted categorical variable into numerical either with label encoding or one not encoding depending on the situation and later on once uh, we were ready with our data set we split them into train and test and then modeling part and over here i have made use of two models logistic regression and gradient boosting classifier Okay, so let's uh, focus for on the data pre-processing part for a bit, Rohan. Uh, so you said uh, you you replace the null values. Right. So what are the ways in which you can replace the null values in a data set? Yeah. So basically, uh, the first and very basic way is to delete them. Let's okay. say uh, you have lakhs of rows, and you have let's say hundred or two hundred rows of null values. So we can manage to delete them because we already have lakhs of rows of data available. But let's say we have only hundred rows of data, and out of which fifty percent are null values. Then we can't basically remove them. We have to replace or impute them with other values. Let's say uh, in there is a categorical variable inside which null values are there. Then there is only one way to feed or uh, to impute null values in categorical variable that is mode. Okay, that is one way. And when we talk about numerical values, then we can either go with mean and median, depending on the situation. Let's say uh, there is age column, and inside this age column we have null values. Then we often go with mean, not median. And we uh, let's say there is one more column known as salary, and in salary again we have null values. Then at that time we go with median instead of mean, because like. To be honest, I don't know the reason behind this. Uh, like there are some thumb rules that that were there on the internet, so uh, I got from there only. Okay, so my, I think mostly the reason is because of the distributions. When we talk about age, mostly everything is like on a lie between the range of right. Let's say eighteen to ninety nine or something like that. But whereas salary can range from anything, so it depends on the distribution what you are playing with. Right. Okay. Cool. So that okay now that is data pre-processing uh, to one extent. Then you also said so. Did you check whether the data points for your uh, uh, in the data set were normally distributed or not, or was it kind of like? Uh, uh, oh, you... I didn't check like uh, whether the column values like uh, the column values are normally distributed or not. I just went on. With replacing with mean or median, uh, if it is numerical and mode, if it is categorical. Okay, cool. Uh, you mentioned about encoding, right? Yeah. 
So do you know what is uh, ordinal encoding and what is label encoding? Yep. So basically, uh, let's say uh, there is survey of a dish. Then there can be, let's say three optional. Good, uh, very good, good, average, bad, very bad. Let's say five options. So this is basically ordinal. Okay. Because you are going to uh, you are going to rate this dish from zero to five on the basis of zero to five, from very good to very bad. So this is ordinal. And uh, when you talk about label encoding, label encoding uh, basically we use on nominal data. Nominal nominal is nothing but uh, nothing but there is no order. Let's say gender, gender of a person. It can be male, uh, it can be male, female, and others. So there, it is not ordered. So okay. we can basically have a label encoding or one not encoding basically. But on ordinal data, we have to use label encoding because over there, phi, let's say phi is for very good. Then phi had some weightage as compared to zero. So that is the thing. Okay, fair point. Cool. And then you said that you applied two models on top of this, which was logistic regression and gradient boosting. Yeah. So why did you kind of go from logistic regression to gradient boosting? To like... So uh, basically, uh, as I have told you earlier, this is basically a classification problem. Okay. And in, in my uh, case, there were only two classes in my output variable that is yes and no, churn or not churn. So, uh, like I started with logistic regression because, uh, as we all know for two classes, like if there are two classes in output variable, we often go for logistic regression because it gives a better result. So I just went on checking for the same. I went for logistic regression and again, uh, we all know there is ensemble learning and in ensemble learning, there is boosting and backing. So bagging, uh, should I explain that also? No, wait, hold on. So, uh, okay. you said uh, you went from logistic to bag and boosting and whatever there is. So yeah. what are the results of logistic that bad that you had to go there? Yeah, basically the results were not appropriate, not up to mark. So which so, metrics were, did you use to evaluate those results? Uh, since basically my application, uh, like the data set that I had, I had got, it was completely biased. The, I guess 80% was yes and 20% was no. And if our data set is in balance, uh, it's, if our data set is balanced, then we can go for accuracy metric. But since my data set was imbalanced, I either, I either had to go for uh, recall, precision and F1 score. So I had to check all three. And one more uh, metric that I have used is AUC ROC score. So on basis of all these four metrics, I got to know that uh, logistic regression is not performing well. That's why I went for other classifiers like random forest classifier and gradient boosting classifier. But again, la random forest didn't give us, uh, like didn't give me a proper result. And finally the gradient boosting was giving me like as per the expectation result. Okay. So what is F1 score Ron? So basically, uh, as I said earlier, if our data set is imbalanced, then we either go for precision recall and F1 score. Let's say uh, uh, in conf confusion metrics, we have four elements, true, true positive, false positive, true negative, false negative. Okay. Like precision, there are some criteria where you choose precision or recall. Let's say there is more weightage for false positive in your case. Okay. Then we either, when we go for precision, if there is more weightage for false negative, then we go for recall and let's say both false, po uh, false positive and false negative have equal weightage. Then we go for F1 score because F1 score is nothing but the harmonic mean of precision and recall. Okay. So here's the question. Uh, what's the formula for precision? Uh, precision is nothing but true positive upon true positive plus false positive. And recall? True positive upon true positive plus false negative. Cool. So let's take a very basic question here, Rohan. Let's say that yeah. my th threshold is one. Okay. What will be the value of uh, recall and precision? No idea, sir. Uh, just the formula, right? I, 
Yeah, so basically what I have heard is the default value of threshold, like the default threshold value is 0 0.5. Correct. But since we are moving upwards, so... No, but it's just a I simple didn't... application, right, Rohan? So you, you correctly said the formula, right? Uh, let's yeah. let's take a simple example of re recall. So you said yeah. recall is true positive upon true positive plus false negatives. False negative. TP yeah. upon TP plus SN. So what will happen when your threshold becomes one? I guess it will only remain TP. So everything will be marked as what? Zero. Right. Correct. Everything. Right. Because every probability will be lesser than one, right? Like everything right. can't be, and probability can't be greater than one. So, of course. right. TP will become zero because there won't be any positives. So, what will be the value of recall at that point of time? Zero. Yeah. And the other way around. Okay, cool. Let's move on. Uh, so, you said random forest also did not give you the right result, so on and so forth. And you use gradient boosting. So, how does GPM work? Do you have any idea? Uh, what is GPM? Sorry, gradient boosting classifier. So boosting methodology that you use. The... Yeah, so basically uh, both a random forest and a gradient boosting classifier, they fall under ensemble learning. Okay. And ensemble learning is basically a machine learning paradigm where we often train several models or base models. Uh, that is basically a decision tree. So we take around, let's say it's up to us how many base models we have to take. We take, uh, let's say we, we are taking 100 uh, base models and on each, uh, basically we are, we are training these base models on the same data set and we collectively get the result. Now over here in Ensemble, we have two techniques, bagging and boosting. So the only difference is in bagging, all the base models, they work parallelly. And in boosting, all the base models, they work sequentially. So the one uh, big uh, big advantage that we are getting in boosting is, let's say first model works, it gives uh, let's say uh, let's say x accuracy. That accuracy is passed to the second model. It tries to see what the accuracy that had got by the first model, and it tries to improve. So at the end of last base model, you are getting higher accuracy as compared to the bagging. So that is the key, uh, key, that, so that is the reason. We often get higher accuracy, higher uh, better results when you are using boosting over bagging. Okay. So, what which boosting technique did you use for this? A uh, gradient boosting. So, what's the difference between normal boosting methodology and gradient boosting? Or gradient boosting guess, is the default way of boosting. I guess gradient boosting comes under boosting. No, no, that's true. But see, boosting as N number of things inside it, right? There right. is something called as XG boost. There is something called as ADA boost. Cat boost, yeah. Yeah, cat boost. So, can you explain to me how gradient boosting works? Uh, to be honest, the background thing, I don't know yet. Okay, cool. Uh, all right. So, uh, you you use GBM. What was the? Uh, so you said the results were much better. So, did you find out the variables which were very important in getting you those results in GBM? So, like, yeah, so we, uh, like in the in introduction as well, like I had mentioned two variables the number of calls made by the customer in day, evening, and night, and basically the calling time which a customer has spent uh, in a day, night, and time. So, there were, uh, I guess, Two of these were important in order to guess whether the customer is going to churn or not. Okay. All right, Rohan. That's it from my side. Thank you uh, for joining in. Thank you, sir.